All right, part three of my uh, whole jam session thing. We're going to talk about why it is very, very bad to go to jam sessions. Why it's very bad to play with other people. Why it's very bad to play gigs. Don't do it. If you really want to get good, don't do it. <laughs> no, just kidding. We're gonna, but we're going to talk about the, the nuances behind all this. And then, as I said in my previous video, at the end, we're going to summarize the the main thing to take away from all of this so if you haven't already watched last week's video and the one before that as well because it sets everything up for today's final video and before we do that please like please subscribe please leave a comment it makes such a huge difference i don't expect these three videos to get many views but if they do great if they don't well it was fun making these videos anyway so let's talk about this why it's such a bad idea to go out and meet people because there are people who go to jam sessions every single week and they don't get any better there are people who do gigs every single week they are not progressing why is that because whether you go to jam sessions or whether you whether you go or you don't go everything boils down to how things are happening inside your head you if you really want to progress ultimately you have to activate this part of your brain that is conducive to learning. And it's the same thing with languages. Some people, I live in Japan, right? I'm studying Japanese. Some people go to Japan, they move to Japan, they live there for 30, 40, 50 years, and they still can't speak Japanese. Uh, they, they, they do end up learning like little things, but they, they can't speak it to save their lives. Why is that? because they have not activated that part of their brain that wants to learn that wants to absorb and the same thing is with music you can play lots of gigs you can go to jam sessions every week and definitely you will pick something up here and there something very superficial but you're not going to progress unless boom you activate that part of your brain it's the same thing with transcriptions i made a video some time ago about talking about why it's it's potentially useless to transcribe if you don't activate that part of your brain. Here's the thing. I've been to jam sessions where the hosts have been hosting the jam session for years, many years, every single week for many years, and still need the sheet music to play Autumn Leaves, to play All the Things You Are, uh, to play Blue Bossa. Isn't that ridiculous? After all those years, they still don't know those songs. And if they don't know those songs, what that basically means, they've been playing it for years, it means that while they're playing, they're not listening. And because they're not really listening in a way that is absorbing the meaning behind the music. If I hear, let's say, uh, Blue Bossa, my guitar's probably out of tune, but whatever. I hear this, going to this. Um, I can't put this into words. I, I can explain three. It goes one, four, then two, five, back to one. But be, be, before even thinking about the theory, I just hear the movement. And I, it's something so familiar with me because Blue Bossa. So last week, I played a gig with a singer, very talented, Taiwanese singer. Hi, Jasmine. And she wanted to sing like a, a Japanese song that I had never played before. And so I put on the, re, the, the recording on YouTube with a piece of paper without a guitar in my hand. I listened to it. I started writing the chords. Boom, 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 Perfect. Without a guitar in my Why was I able to get it? Because of a song like Blue Bus. Because that song goes... Etc, etc. Just... Because of having learned a lot of songs, like a lot of by, Lullaby Birdland. Um, Black Orpheus. Lots of songs with these similar chord progressions. I'm not thinking one, four, five, or anything. I just 
it's very hard. Once you get there, you'll understand what I mean. You're not even thinking about any kind of theory. You just know. You just It's just part of you. And so that's how I was able to figure out that Japanese song. Boom, on the spot. That can only be done if you activate that part of your brain that wants to know the music. And for that, because those hosts are playing the same song every week with the chart, but not activating that part, they will always need the chart. They, they, they're lost without it. And therefore, if you're adopting that mentality and you go to the jam session every week, you're not really going to learn much. You have to spend some time at home uh, figuring out music in such a way that when you're on stage, you can be listening. And that would mean probably spending some time at home, maybe with a teacher even, or just one, one person one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, learning songs, but learning some, committing them to memory, playing them so much that what I the phenomenon that I described earlier occurs. It will happen if you if you do it, but it requires you spending a lot of time repeating, 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 playing the same song over and over and over. But as you repeat it over and over and over, you are you you activate a part of your brain where you're just listening attentively. You're not just putting your fingers here and playing. No, you're listening. absorb this it's hard to put into words i know but it's it's just the way it's kind of like if you're feeling itchy here you're not telling yourself oh i'm feeling itchy on the 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 top part of my forearm in the middle no you just you just know and just start scratching it's just a feeling you want to develop this feeling for the music and that's something you have to do without with uh no distraction you do this at home you practice that way and then after, once you're more or less confident having done it at home, you bring that same mentality on stage with you. And there's another thing about jam sessions, or let's say gigs. Let's, it's not just jam sessions. Let's say, I, I've seen this happen. So, like, uh, you're a bass player, and then you get, you're, you're talented, People recognize your talent and they start hiring you for gigs. And then you start playing with so many bands, playing so many different styles of music, so many different songs that you're, you're struggling. You, you still can't memorize these songs and try as hard as you might. It's, you're struggling. Why is that? Because unless you have acquired this ability to understand music in this magical way that I described this this way that goes far beyond theory just having be the music be part of your body unless you have that ability playing too many gigs or too many different songs will work against you it's far better to play with only one band or have a regular gig where you're playing with maybe even 30 I'm just pulling these numbers out of nowhere but like 30 to 40 songs to choose from but these 30 40 songs you play them every single week or every at every gig and again usually a gig of two sets you play like what 15 songs so it's possible to maybe do two three gigs without repeating the material but after the third week you're going to start repeating the material but you do this for a number of years and you you listen very carefully of course you pay attention then that phenomenon will occur because that is exactly what happened to me when i was doing that uh, those gypsy jazz gigs i think that was in the was in this video sorry i lost track of things already i'm shooting these videos back to back by the way was it in this video was the one last week where i explained when i started getting to gypsy jazz i had a regular gig where we had like 30 songs or so and we played that gig twice a week for a number of years and then after the, the boss decided to cut us down to only once a week but still we did that for a number of years my goodness, I didn't even know this, but it this setup this was the foundation for my for for learning how to learn. And it did me so much good. That's exactly what happened to Pat Martin. That's what happened to all these great players of the past where they were playing these regular gigs all the time, playing the same songs over and over and over again to the point where they just 
heard the music. And when once you have that, it gets easier and easier to learn more and more music. It just it's kind of like this uh, I guess feedback loop. It just well, positive reinforcement. It just just by doing things naturally, you will get better. It's the exact same thing with languages. Like I said, there's some people who don't activate that part of the brain when they move to, let's say, Japan, and they still can't speak Japanese. But if you activate that part of your brain that's trying to absorb things, at one point, you will reach a level where you don't have to really study as much anymore. You just have to live your life, and you will learn automatically because you have acquired that ability to, to process things. And it's... It's an amazing, amazing thing. And that's how a lot of the best players in the world got good. So we're going to come back to that in a second. Another reason why you should avoid going to jam sessions or playing gigs if you want to get good is at one point there are diminishing returns. At this point, oh, it depends on the jam session. It depends who too. But like there's very, very little value for me to play with to play a lot of at a lot of jams whether it's bebop or gypsy jazz. no maybe no, more so gypsy jazz than bebop to be honest gypsy jazz like unless i'm playing with like birelli angelo the bar and all the stuff which i could if i lived in europe then going to like a jam session in tokyo or wherever it brings it brings me nothing in terms of educational material it's it's something i do for social reasons just to hang out with friends just to be nice um, but if your goal is to get good, then at one point you have to f find the right level of environment for me. For Gypsy Jazz, the right level environment for me is in Europe <laughs> with all those players that I'm friends with. Uh, but I don't live in Europe. I live in Japan. So that's why I don't play much Gypsy Jazz anymore. So still, at least with Bebop and all that stuff, there's still some songs that I need to like I need a uh, refresher on and so it's still it's still valid for me but not as much as it was when I didn't know as many songs now I know like quite a lot of songs what would be more beneficial for me is to play with good musicians in a more controlled environment uh, what would be really good for me uh, for example would be to a company or play with great musicians playing the same repertoire like uh, if, if my goal were to continue like learning songs playing like the songs that they want to play like 30 songs have a list of maybe 30 to 40 songs or and we play them we every week or every day and then we gradually add more songs that would be really great for me so there's that thing of uh, diminishing return at one point and especially once you know how to play with bad players, you don't want to play with them anymore. It's it's not fun. It's great sk skill to have. Man, find yourself some good players to play with, and then you can continue learning. Again, that's if your goal is to learn, right? So the whole point behind this video is to tell you that unless you have acquired certain basic skills that I'll enable you to learn when you're at jam sessions, you probably should be spending more time at home developing set skills before you actually go to the sessions. And then once your skills are at a relatively heightened level, you want to be more, um, how do you say, close-minded, strict about who you choose to play with. Again, if you want to get better, then at one point you want to, don't want to play with the bad musicians anymore. You just want to play with good musicians and get better at doing that. Because what I did notice also at jam sessions, there are lots of talented people who, you know, we are creatures of habit. And there are some very talented people, great instrumentalists, who end up becoming very, very bad musicians because they're always playing with bad musicians that they themselves become bad musicians. For example, a drummer that keeps messing up the time because they're on stage you know they're having fun they're just like playing random crap and it's not it's dragging so much they don't even realize it and then that becomes the new norm for them 
Whereas if you're playing with really, really good musicians, especially if you're working on a really good leader who has a very strict vision of how the music should be, they're going to like uh, whip you into shape. They're going to make sure you're on point. They, you're slowing down. You're dragging. You're speeding up. You're rushing, everything. And so it's, it's, that's, a, that's the environment you have to be in once you have developed the, 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 skill, the skills that I mentioned previously. So there we go. In the end, whether you go or whether you don't go, no matter how you practice, even my friend asked me, like, what do you think a balanced practice session should be? So like transcribing, uh, technique, or going out and all that stuff. All those, all those things are good and bad depending on how you approach them. Because if you transcribe, just like figuring out the notes, okay, boom, boom, write them all on paper, but you're not really listening and absorbing the music, then it's wasted. Because I know a lot of classical musicians who have transcribed solos, but they cannot improvise. Because they transcribe the solos, just the notes, without understanding what they mean, without understanding the, how the notes relate to the context. And there are some people who also transcribe, who know how to improvise, but they transcribe, like, let's say, a whole bunch of Joe Pass. And they even record themselves making covers more or less correctly. But when they actually improvise, they sound nothing like the stuff that they transcribe. Because it's the same thing. It's already great that they transcribe. That means they can hear. They have the ability to decipher more or less the correct notes. But they have not absorbed it. It's that magical phenomenon that I'm talking about that I can't put into words. It's just part of you. You just know it. Kind of like if you go to a rock guitar player, especially one that was learning to play rock music in the 70s, you tell any guitar player this. They will be, you give them the guitar, they will be able to reproduce this note for note without even thinking about it. They just know, because that's like the thing to learn, apparently. They say, I wasn't born then. <laughs> you tell me if you were. Or just this. Or this. You're not thinking F power chord, okay, then it goes to the four, then the flat three, then the flat six. No, you just. That's what I mean. It's the exact same thing with complicated music, whether it's jazz or whatever. For example, a song like Stella by Starlet, which is a little bit of a complicated song. What was that noise? Oh, well. If I had, if you told me to play in the key of C, okay, because it's a complicated song in terms of harmony, I do have to think a little bit, but once, just, just a little bit. But I have the music so much in me that it shouldn't be too difficult. If I had to play in the key of uh, G, I'm not thinking of all these like theoretical things. Oh, I go to the short form. I, I don't even know. I mean, I could. I, if I sat down, I could. Oh, it's this, it's this, that. But it's just, it's instinct. Um, so this is what you have to develop uh, if you really want to get good. By the way, um, by the time you watch this video, it should be the end of March. And my publisher should soon be releasing a book that talks about how to develop these skills so check my social media like uh, instagram or for the this book release we release on amazon they said maybe in april or in may it's it's all about that so anyway thank you so much i hope you enjoyed this video like subscribe leave a comment Woo!